very loud yes you are in your ears You're i can't really hear myself really okay i'll help you thank you christina she's going for the knob Is that better? um yes thank you is this just a placebo effect do you just pretend to turn the knob and then i just since i think you turn the knob i i'm satisfied no i think you really did turn the I, knob because i do sound louder yeah i don't I don't fake you out. <laughs> Sometimes you do. Wow, how? Um, how do I do that? I don't actually. I can't think of anything. I just was trying to be. You, just, you just think I'm cool. <laughs> so cool people are sort of pulling the wool over your eyes and right. faking you out. That's true. So faking you. Out. Let's do this thing. Let's do like let's introduce the show and be super official right wow, in the wrong? beginning. What's wrong with you? I'm just. I'm in a hurry here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry, I know I can't leave until this show is over. But I'm like, let's just do the official stuff now. Okay. <laughs> you go right ahead. Hello. Good morning. Happy Friday. You guys are listening to 11th Hour Radio, coming to you live from Royalton Community Radio, WFVRLP 96.5. 11th Hour Radio comes to you every Friday at 11 a.m. with Christina Stikos and Emily Howe. We are so happy to be here with you. You know, I think... Since I've last seen you, you went to professional DJ school. No, I'm that just, was so slick. I'm, I'm efficient. I'm feeling efficient today. Are you a clone of Emily Howe? Yeah. No. Do you want to s- come sniff how bad I smell? You'll know it's me. What's on your hand? I had to write Tiki Torch on my hand because I... I have Tiki Torches. You want mine? Yeah, I do. They're in my woodshed. You can just come get them. The big woodshed out Okay, I can't. I can't. Never mind. I'm not taking yours, actually. I thought maybe you just like had them. In the other room or something. Oh, that I brought them <laughs> with me. I always bring my tiki torches wherever <laughs> I, I know, go. Just I in case it gets dark. But No. Ha- Once I leave here, I can't leave my house again. I, I'm like nose to the grindstone getting this haunted forest together here. It rained and rained, Christine. It rained for days while I was supposed to be setting up this haunted trail. And now it's like a mud pit. It yeah. Hopefully it will dry out today. But I'm trying to get all this stuff done. Do you have shavings? No, there's some of the there's leaves. Pits. The leaves are seeming to sop oh. it up a little bit. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Just a little breeze out that will dry it up. It was super dark the last couple of days. I know. We were talking about it, just how dark it was, and just what does that do to your mood? You know, darkness. You just feel a little creepy inside. But I suppose you're. It's okay because Halloween's coming. So feeling creepy now for just a little while is going to be just right. It's just going to. Yeah. Slide right in. I think it's okay. Do I have chocolate all over my face? Possibly. I just realized I I got up really early and went out into the woods and it was still dark and like didn't eat any breakfast because 
our, I was going to pour a bowl of cereal, but our milk had expired. And You mean you didn't even try it? You're such a chicken. No, no it, it said even... the 23rd on it, and that was a little far for me. John sniffed it, and he tasted it, and he was like, it's fine, and he ate it with his cereal. You make your husband do it? See, on the weeks that the boys are not here, we just don't care about these things. But even though he was eating it, and he was like, it's fine, Emily, the, the milk is the one thing where it's bad if it tastes bad. But I didn't believe him, and so I wouldn't eat it. And I said, no, that expired on the 23rd. I'm not eating it. Yeah. So I went without breakfast. So on the way down here, I, I ate a nutty bar, which are my guilty pleasure. And I had them hidden, hidden away in the car. <laughs> I see. With the tiki torches. No, I got to go get a tiki Look torch. Look at this. ABC gum. You're chewing I'm it. gonna put it down. I got should not chew okay. gum on the air. So. I couldn't hear you chewing it before I'm getting pretty good at hiding it. Before you laugh. It's like chew chewing it. tobacco. You just sort of put it on Ew, your it is lip. not like chewing chewing tobacco. That stuff is bad. That would be if I was still in the dating world, that would be a total deal breaker. Yeah. And smoking. I don't like I don't like smoking either. My you my, can't kiss people that are my smoking. My first my first hub. He had a real issue with smoking and chewing tobacco and cigars so and gross. all kinds of stuff. Gross. Cigars every morning at 3 a.m. He'd get up 3, what? 4 o'clock in the morning, smoke cigars and read books. Yeah. That's weird. Read philosophy. Sounds like a douche. Sorry. <sighs> <laughs> I'm I just, not supposed I'm, to say that word on air. I'm just not, no comment. Oh, I'm, I feel like I have forgotten the rules of the radio. What are they? Let's go over them. I forgot that I wasn't just talking to you. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Great. I'm glad you remembered I'm just, just in time. I'm just remembering now. It's good to be aware of your surroundings. So I was going to launch into other Other stuff about. Stories. Yes. Tricky terrain. X stories. X's. X's. We're not just talking to each other. Yeah. Okay. All right. That stinks. Yeah. Let's talk about like uh, the Farnham's. <laughs> who, who Farnham? What are you talking about? Well, I passed the Farnhams driving, you know, uh, uh, I can't think of their names, but they used to own the Chelsea store. Nope. No idea. You, Because you didn't live in Chelsea. No, I, I didn't. just thought they, they were so nice about We have Tunbridge Farnhams as well, but I clearly you're not talking about those ones. There's lots of Farnhams. It's kind of like Howes. There's lots of Howes. There's lots yeah. of Farnhams. Yeah. No, they owned the Chelsea store, and those were the the good old days when the Chelsea store actually was a store, and you could go back into the freezer case and get and store your frozen things in your own locker that had your own special padlock on it, that and it was just pretty cool. Like, it was a safety safe? Is it safety deposit? Safe deposit box? Exactly, it was like that. But you could which put, is it? Which is the word though? Safety safe deposit safety deposit. I don't know. I don't know now. I don't, I don't have one of those. My... I don't have any jewels or important documents to deposit. So yeah, whatever. Okay, so it's like that, but it's a freezer. Yeah. Wow, that's very awesome. And they, you know, they had a deli, and he and I know. Um, D- Dave. Where Dave. are those good stores? Where are any stores? <laughs> I know you used to wear an oh. apron. Don't you like going into a store where, where, people you're, wear where you're actually buying yeah. food and people are wearing aprons and not just butchers? Um, why would you be wearing an apron if you weren't a butcher nowadays? Because you're cooking things. Oh, have, oh, like deli people. Yeah, cooking. Other I have things, aprons. Like I have macaroni I have a salad bunch of aprons that they scoop out of big tubs. Yeah, we yeah. don't. Our our family has some aprons, but we don't wear them unless it's Thanksgiving or Christmas. Then we put our aprons <laughs> on. <'cause laughs> this is that's the silliest thing I ever heard. <laughs> it's so cute. You've never seen me in an apron. <laughs> I bet you would think it was Isn't so that cute. So close to a dress. Yeah, it's just about as close, close as I'm to dress get. As you get. And it's got flowers. It's beautiful flowered. Wow. Okay. Oh, I love it. It's from Smith and Hawken. We'll have to Thanksgiving together someday so I can see this. Okay. <laughs> we could do it this year. We almost could. Well, I, because I, I don't. Anna said that she hates Thanksgiving and Christmas now. What? No. Yeah. She's my, just all, going through a phase. You no, know, my kids all hate it now. Oh my God. I love holidays so well, much. I think it's because you've still got little kids. But when No, I loved them before I had little kids and well, I will love them. We'll talk after about this well. in 10 years and just see how you're doing with it. Okay. Just just because. Oh, speaking of turkeys, is there such a thing as a white turkey? Because I yeah. thought I saw one in Chelsea yes. once I was driving yes, down are. here. Yeah, there were white turkeys, and yeah, I was so amazed at that. You think turkeys just come in brown? Yeah. 
turkeys are brown. <laughs> of course they are. No, they're not. What? Turkeys are not. White turkeys? Just, yes. Turkeys. Well, don't act like I'm so stupid. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just, why would I know? Why turkeys would... come in all colors, except for like blue. I think that's pretty much the only color they don't come in. Okay. That, but you can find some with sh- like shades of okay. blue. I don't really care. But not, you know, full. It's on. not, it's not, not that like important baby to me. blue. Not baby blue. No, I don't even eat turkey. Little indigo. I'm not having a turkey for Thanksgiving, so what I don't care. What about tofurkey? Maybe. Possibly. Okay. Or tofu turkey. Sp- speaking of stores that are out of business. Yes. Remember how we were going to take a field trip to Snowsville General Store? No, it's not. It's going out of business <gasps> after like. 297 years Are they or having a sale? I don't know. Let's go. Come on. Okay, that's going out of business. Please. Bell Mains in Randolph when are they is going be- out of business. Like no. all the biggies. The biggies. When- what, what's happening to the world? This is like the apocalypse. It's all because Target's coming to Vermont. What? Do you think it is? Yes. All the little stars are going to close. But, but, but the Snowsville General Store is nowhere near where a Target is. Like... It shouldn't be affected. Your favorite store might just mysteriously disappear like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I don't know if I have a favorite store. No, I love, um, I love Will's. Will's hopefully will never close. Will's General Store in Chelsea? It couldn't close. I love Coburn's couldn't General Store in Stratford is my I'll other you, favorite. If Will's closes, it's the world the, is absolutely over. Yes. Yeah, It's I agree. the apocalypse. Totally. Without, is. yeah, I just couldn't imagine it. I don't know what's happening. It's probably financial well, with all these places now. Everybody's... Speaking of which, remember Upham's? Upham's yes, store? In, very well, well. And Dick Upham? Yep. And he was the proprietor. He owned it for many years. And then his, uh, I guess his kids took it over after that for a while, right? Didn't, well, there was um... a harness shop there too. No, right? no, not there. Not that oh, but one. But it was the next one down, right? It it's where the pizza down. place is. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. But um, so Dick Upham, for when my kids were little, Dick Upham was the guy behind the cash register. Mm-hmm. And so I think Anna must have been in early grade school, you know? and Back when her, she still loved Christmas. Yes, and her little buddy Freeland was very outgoing. I'd say much more outgoing than most children her age. And so she came up with a great name for Dick Upham, which just spontaneously came, rolled off her lips. She used to call him <laughs> Up Dickum. <laughs> it was so cute oh that is so cute i know i miss those days you see i just miss those days i love when kids say really inappropriate things out of absolute innocence yes me too that's the best yeah so funny yeah. oh man oh man well i sorry that i do smell bad it's not you it's a skunk oh no but my dog did get sprayed by a skunk i could be bringing that with me too and i honestly i've sweat my little butt off today it's, already so it's i am not, sweaty and i know that i can i can smell myself you so. didn't listen to what i said what i said, said was that as i came up the stairs which was way before you ever got i here, send my smell ahead of me just so that i'm not late i'm not even going to talk to you if you're going to be <laughs> irrational fine okay i have no idea what this says on my list yeah i've got an interesting list here i've got jumping the kabota so if anybody uh up anybody out there knows pete cole please tell him to put a new battery in the kabota he'll know what i'm talking about because uh, i need it for work kabota so is that a japanese name oh probably it's like toyota kabota I have to itch myself. A on Toyota my Kubota. That sounds oh. like it goes together, but I, don't, I think they're two different companies. But they should maybe like Yamaha. merge. Yamaha, Honda, Hyundai, Husqvarna. It's funny that you're saying. I feel like that. Husqvarna is a little more um, German. No, that's like Finland or uh, Husqvarna. Husqvarna, <laughs> Swedish. Maybe it's Swedish. Why did? Yeah, because they would have chainsaws up in Scandinavian countries. They have a lot of trees up there, just like we do. Right. They're very much, you know, they're very soul. There's a deep soul relationship between Scandinavia and Vermont. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not tired. No, it's okay. I know you've got problems. (laughs) (laughs) How about a spelling challenge? 99 problems. Yes. Okay, I've got two today. Two words for you. Ready? Uh Uh-huh. The first word is irresistibly tick tock tick oh god talk it can't have that many eyes how does it go it can't i have too many eyes hold on 
No, it might be just the right amount. Really? There's Trust three yourself. eyes? Is there three eyes? Believe in yourself. I-R-R-I-S-I-S-T-A-B-L-Y. No. Shh. Resist. How do you spell resist? Oh, that's R. E-S-I-S-T. In today's world, that's a word that you need to know. I just know that one because I have a t-shirt that says it. But Okay. Uh, did you get it? Irresistible. Yes. Irresistible. I, I, okay. I didn't get irresistibly because you said no. But resist, I know. Is right. Okay. Fantastic. Tell me how to spell irresistibly, though. I-R-R-E-S-I-S-T-I-B-L-Y. Look, every time I write it the second time yeah. and cross it out, it was right. I so don't, trust, I never trust myself. What is myself. this telling you? I know, I know. Trust your first instincts. No, that was my second instinct. Trust but I went back to my first because you said trust my instinct. <laughs> oh, sorry. So I, I should actually not trust my instinct and go with my second attempt. Yeah, I don't know what to recommend for you. It's all right. Spelling is probably not ever going to be my strong yeah, point. Yeah, just don't try to get into spelling very deep. Stay at no. the superficial I'll level. Stay at like the three and just letter use spell words. check. Okay, so the second word. Uh, you Ready? just gave me. You no, said resist. It's two today. It, no, you said irresistibly and resist. I, I got resist, right? No, I said irresistibly. I said resist so oh, you could oh, put it. Geez, resist um, is I part of I was of so excited. I thought I got a spelling word right. Okay, fine. Give me your second word. Third word. Not if you're going to have an attitude <laughs> okay. about it. Attitude's gone. Go ahead. Okay. Faux pas. Oh, I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know what that starts with. I'm sorry. Do you ever say it? Have you ever said I faux pas? I do say it, but I don't know what it starts with. You know, now I can't. I can't even like put pen to paper. Faux pas. No faux pas. Faux pas. Does is it an F? Is it a PH? Faux. Well, you know, faux. It's like, like F-A-U-X? faux fur. Yes. P A. That was easy. Close. That was close. That was a good college try for somebody who didn't <laughs> go to college. Okay. F A U X. Pa. What would be a silent? P A S. Yes. God, you're brilliant. I what could, is your I IQ have, again? I could have spelled that it's, maybe. It's way up on the chart, on the uh, high chart uh, of uh, the high side, clearly. of the high side of your chart. Clearly, yes. Like, <laughs> speaking of charts, astrology, I had a big disappointment oh, this week yeah, with astrology. Too. You I'd should have come and been our, our clairvoyant fortune teller since you love astrology so much. Shoot, what happened? Do you not? Do you want to? But you'd have to interact with like hundreds of people. I'm just a very busy woman. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't have time for. It's okay. I have play. fortune tellers already, but you would have made a good one. Yeah. So sometime I'll do it. Okay. We'll 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 work on your socialization before yeah. next year. Okay. It's a fancy little velvet tent, and it's dark. It is dark in there. Nice. With like little some glowing skulls and things. Great. Yeah. So you might like it. Awesome. Okay, go no. on. Okay, so huge astrology fail this week, okay? Because the luckiest day of the year was Tuesday. It was Tuesday. I don't feel like this, for you or for everybody? Everybody. I don't feel like this was a very lucky week, really. I know. I, you're supposed to be able to tap into this stuff and, and kind of make the most of it. The weather was kind of glum. I got far less done than I needed to. Some sort of crummy things went down. My old house got foreclosed this week and auctioned. I have no idea who or what or anything because I was too busy to go find out what was going on. That well, was a huge... How can we turn this around? I mean, just how... didn't feel lucky. I mean, it, obviously, it's not a house that I want any longer, but the situation, the way it all played out, which was out of my control and really not the way it was supposed to go... Yes. ...was, was disappointing. But was is there perhaps a silver lining to this? Because I can only think that since... Well, it's gone now, so that's good. Yeah. I don't have that hanging around my neck, but... That's a huge... La that's a huge unburdened... Yes. Like when my house burned down, my old house, it was very yeah. shocking. I wasn't yeah. living in it, thankfully, but it burned down on my birthday. Oh, my God. And that seemed a little strange. Yes, did someone burn it down? Well, we're not sure. Oh. I mean, the official report was that the it was caused by a wood stove. You know what? The official people don't really... Yeah, it was a little fishy. Sometimes uh, know what it is that they are talking about. Yeah. It was a little, As bit, I've noticed. little bit fishy. So why did I, why am I fishy. talking about that? Oh, uh, oh, losing. Letting, oh losing yes. Homes. Uh, conflagration. Is that a word? No. Probably. But I can't spell it. <laughs> 
Well, anyway, so uh, yes, sometimes those things are shocking and terrifying, and yet they release something so that it is. There are always moments of closure in a in a weird way. Yeah, but that could be the kind of luck that we're having this week with Jupiter and the Sun conjunct. It's also ticky, like offy, when you're like, "Wow, offy!" I was supposed to have a whole bunch of money from that. Yeah, and it never came to me. Right. That I, you know, I can relate to Especially that. Especially as you go into winter and you're at your poorest, and you're like, I gotta pay for firewood and heat and bills and all these things. And how much easier my life would have been if everything went the way it legally is supposed to. Yes, indeed. But that's not how. That's not how it works. The world works apparently. No, because the legal system is not necessarily about justice. Sometimes it no, is, no. but a lot of times it's about Mostly power. Mostly it's not. Mostly it's not about yeah, justice. It's just about who's. You know, it's it's a bit it's about you can have justice if you can afford to buy justice. That is the problem. If well, you can afford to go back or, and back and back and fight. Yes, which but costs you, money. You can also if you can afford it, you can manipulate the justice system. Right. So there's both all well, having to do neither with neither have I been able to afford manipulating well, nor have I been able to afford even having any justice. I'll tell you, so. that's why people people like you and me should just stay out of the courts. Well, I try. <laughs> my, I know. It's unless, not like my unless, favorite place to be. Unless they drag us in there, let's try right. to stay out. Well, I can't afford it, unfortunately. Let's make a bit. Let's shake on it. Let's just stay out of court. Okay. I don't, I don't, go, in, I don't okay. go in there very that often. That felt good. <laughs> For ages, Listen. I did. I knew, like, I knew like the child support people's like pets' names and how their grandchildren oh. were doing because it was, it was a... I, I've just, there's no point in going there anymore. No. We've got better things it's an unpleasant, to do. It's an unpleasant got, little building. We have stuff to do. Yeah. We have places to go and people to meet. Right. So that's what I'm going to right. focus on. Right. Even though this week just didn't pan out quite how I thought it would. But yeah. I'm going to try to find the silver lining in this week and think about something probably did happen that is going to like change the whole course oh, of my life. Soccer ended this week. No, that's, that's lovely. Th- that did not change. But you hate the soccer. Course. You hate soccer. So yes. You should. You should know that it's no longer. You know, happening around you. So I don't have to hear about so it. you don't have to worry that some secret soccer might be being played. Well, my whole thing about sports is you. just, you know why I don't like sports? <laughs> it's not that I actually don't like sports. I'm very athletic. <laughs> yes. It's that I, 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 there was a lot of male chauvinism in sports when I was growing up. I know. Do you and know the male soccer players get paid like 20 times more than the female soccer players? Oh, so what else is new? Somebody said something recently. <clears throat> oh, man, we've never had... A U.S. soccer team go to the World Cup, and somebody else was like, "Uh, yeah, the women's team has gone three times." Yeah, a- and it's like it doesn't count. It doesn't count unless I know. it's the man's team. I know. I it's, could be mixing it's... that up with a different sport because you know what? As much as I like soccer, I don't really pay a lot of attention to the the like actual soccer world. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> you see what happens when you start talking about soccer? You get kind of. T- I know you do the. Cool that you do the total silent treatment. So yeah. I'm stopping. And I'm it's done like, now. I'm okay. done with All right. And it's time for a song, which is fantastic. We got this great song by... Is it spooky? We, we should have done a Halloween theme today. Uh, it, but... might, it might possibly be. Okay. It's called In the Country of the Iroquois. And That's it's a piece... spooky. It might, we might be. Why? Why don't you wait and listen? They were very warring. There's all kinds of mystery. Tribe. And incredible um, secrets hidden within the nation of the Iroquois because <laughs> I come from that land. That is my land. You're not Iroquois. Yes, I was from uh, upstate New York. There's a lot of Iroquois over in that well, direction. You aren't, are you? Of course, my soul is connected oh. to the people of my land. I think my dad's, I can't remember if my dad's side is that and my mom's side is Abnaki or what. Either way, they're warring tribes. Okay. Okay, play it. Here we go. <laughs> Of King Henri Above the walls of Tadassac Was waving Les voyageurs Knee deep in furs Were drunk upon the docks And misbehaving The big bateau Did come and go Wide ocean Gulf and river navigating While swift canoes 
brought sober news from the country of the Iroquois. The Montanais, the Huron race, Champlain had won their trust in honest dealing. Algonquins too, in friendship drew, they hoped his dreams, their future was revealing. With Pongreve, he made parley concerning a commission soon expiring. Now that's one last chance for New Belle France in the country of the Iroquois. Shastaguan, the smoke rings of their council intertwining. This Frenchman bold, their stars foretold, his spirit, his arenda brightly shining. And he never ceased to talk of peace while war upon their enemy pursuing. With weapons fierce, their hearts to pierce in the country of the Iroquois. Two phases of the moon above. Champlain, the land between, did go exploring. He set his traps, he drew his maps, while men and boats lay waiting at their mooring. And then by night, no stars to light the darkness, and with battle scarcely sounding. On up the lake, their course to make, for the country of the A morning light arose on the sight A Mohawk host, a piney shore defending The arquebus, it raised the dust and in a flash, proud chieftains met their ending. Above the shore, a muffled roar, the spirits on the mound are heard lamenting. All things are strange, the world has changed for the country of the Iroquois. Yes, all things are strange, the world has changed. For the country of the Iroquois Sutherland. Oh, that was Pete. Yeah, that was Pete. Of course, of course. What an amazing person he is. Yeah. So glad to have him alive when I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really getting worried that I'm not going to meet Willie Nelson, though, before he dies. Well, well what are you going to do about that? I don't know. I just really don't have time to deal with it. I don't have time to, like, spend all my days conniving ways to meet Willie Nelson. You're going to have to make time. Dies. But I'm also poor. And occasionally, 
there's a concert and it's, you know, within reasonable driving distance, but they're always like many hundred dollars. So I just, I just can't quite. Really? Hundreds of dollars? I feel like, I feel like it's just gonna, it's just gonna happen. It's just gonna happen if it's meant to happen. Yeah. Well, you know me. That's true. So you're kind of like Willie Nelson. (laughs) <laughs> well, that, that's not what Somebody I said Willie Nelson was in Will's store one time because he had a friend who lived in Chelsea. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Who said that? Um, I think Jackie Higgins. We right. should have a history of all the people, all the famous people who have wandered through Chelsea. Why? Ch- like not, Towns I don't mean Van Zandt. I don't happen to live in Chelsea. Towns Van Zandt Zand had a girlfriend in Chelsea. I don't even know who that is. Oh, well, your cultural education is a little bit lacking. Sometimes. But it's okay. I like you that way. I like you dumb. (laughs) That's good. It makes me feel smart. I don't think I'm going to get a lot smarter at this point. No, you actually make me feel dumb sometimes because you're just so witty. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That was not a very witty comeback. That's all right. Well, yeah, I just think this is a great segue to Personal Growth Friday. Right, oh, since we're okay. both feeling a little... Uh, right, you might want to layer it on heavy because we should tell people that we're going to miss the next two shows. Yes, we should announce that. Christina's <clears throat> going off to see some witch doctor. Yes, I have a journey ahead And I of me. can't push the buttons by myself. Yeah, so something will happen. I don't know what, but yeah, don't. don't know. But come back in three weeks and yeah. we'll have a fantastic... Uh, we haven't even told the higher-ups yet that they need to cover for us. Well, but. we're, we're going to get there. We'll do it today. Okay. Yeah. I No, we won't do it today. I'm basically literally doing nothing. I left my sister carving pumpkins with a power drill, and she had attached an egg beater also to a power drill to clean them out. It was very interesting. She was spewing pumpkin guts everywhere. Her husband saw it on Pinterest. <laughs> so she she was like, this is how you clean, Matt said, this is how you clean the, out the pumpkins really fast. So she's taken their hat off, you know, their little lid, Yeah. and then she had an egg beater Wow. Just one beater. One beater. Hooked into the power drill. Yes. And then she was just like just zooming it around inside of the pumpkin and getting inside. I see. That, it has to be a power drill because otherwise it would be long enough to get. I mean, because you have, if you tried to push it in there, it wouldn't go far enough. Power right. drill gives you more uh, so length. That's what I your... left her doing and I have to get back there. And well, that's really, her. if you are looking for a life purpose. You've got one today, man. Get <laughs> Just, back and help hey. Sister Jen. Yeah. Oh, all the hauntings, all the hauntings. All the hauntings. Well, okay, so personal growth. Okay. What I thought we could talk about is fatal attraction. Oh, I wrote kink on my list because you had mentioned kinkers. Kinky, kinky. I, yeah, I made, I made <laughs> up the word. She called them kinkers. Kinkers. I was, I was conjecturing that a certain person might be a kinker. I said. You weren't conjecturing. You knew it. Well, I, I knew he was a little kink- <laughs> kinky. But you didn't know quite the extent. I didn't know the extent of his kinkiness because I cut and it short. you decided to stop I was like, the Meh. kink. For other reasons, cut the though. Kink off. Other reasons. There was, there was a natural right. kind of... Uh, yeah, if you like somebody enough, kink is not, kink is not a deal breaker like, no, like chewing a, tobacco is. It can be an adventure. Yeah, I have Why no not? problem. As long as it is two consenting adults and no right, one's getting right, harmed. right, right. And no one's using chewing tobacco. Okay. What were you going to talk about? Oh, well, you were going to grow us. I don't. You know why? You know why I thought about fatal attraction. It wasn't that I was really that interested in it as a topic relating to people. Mm-hmm. I started because I was researching moths. You know how moths have a kind of fatal attraction to light. Do you know why that is? Um. No. Because Brian most... Pfeiffer could tell us. He collects moths. He puts out a light to collect them. He does some beautiful photographs. Yes, he does. Of in- those <clears throat> types of insects. Well, uh, the simple answer is that most moths use the moon as a navigational beacon. Oh, they're just being tricked. And they're overwhelmed by bright artificial lights that outshine the moon. That's, that's a bummer. Well, it's not always fatal. It's not like they get killed because they go near a light bulb. Some light bulbs don't kill them. They just kind of hang yeah, out near it. It's probably 50-50. Well, but, uh, I don't think Brian's killing them. He puts a big white sheet out. No, he and then wouldn't. He, and then he has um, um, one of those mosquito zappers, but he's un he's taken away the zapping capability, so it's just lighting. And then they come and they go on the white sheet. And then he comes and collects them and takes their picture. And they're not dead. They're not dead. They're fine. 
Well, you straightened that out. I'm just saying. Thanks. You've they're cleared, not always, cleared they're not always, his name. It's not always fatal attraction. It's... It's well. I wasn't worried about moths. I wasn't. I didn't come here to tell you, you that I was be worried that about I was moths. Having you know problem about moths. I came because I was interested in relating moths to people. Oh, okay. All because right. carry on with that. It's then. great to have these useful metaphors that we can see in nature. Right. That things are happening in nature, and we can examine that, and then we can apply it to the human species. And maybe understand ourselves better because we're so screwed up as a species. Well, moths don't know what they're heading for. I think people kind of know. Well, I, do, like, I think yes and no. I think there's that element of free free will. But there's karmic, um, what do you call it, like navigational settings that kick in that we don't really know about so much. And they bring people together. For example, you know, you have a people pleaser person. Yeah. who can't say no, and that person will often find their way to partners who will take advantage of that because their need is to control, and that's how they feel safe. You know, that's how they kind of overcompensate for whatever wounds they have. So the trick is to figure that out and to change your habits. You know, it might it might take a lifetime, right? Yes. I mean, how, do, how are <clears throat> you doing with that? I'm trying to say no more often. You just stuck your paper in your gum. Sorry. It's okay. I it's mean, my paper. I can... I just am worried because you won't be able to turn the page soon. It'll the gum's off. not that sticky. Okay. It's natural gum. Great. It doesn't have all the good qualities. Oh, is that of... Pile stuff? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my kid tried to put some spruce gum in his mouth the other day and just basically glued his jaw together. It didn't... There must be some secret. Maybe you have to dry it. I used to get that stuff at the Farmer's Museum in Cooperstown. And no, it was he didn't real get it anywhere. Gum. He took it off... I mean, he, oh, he, he took it off it a tree. Oh, he got it off a spruce tree? Yeah, it was like oozy. Yeah, it's not great. When we were little, we attempted to do it because we'd read maybe Little House on the... Pr- I don't remember yeah. what we'd read, but it wasn't spruce gum. It was pine pitch. And you do not want to fill your little... Your little cheek with pine pitch. Well, it's a very bad experience. That would be kind of like uh, sealants. You know how you go to the dentist and <laughs> yeah. they put sealants yeah. on? I can't what, believe we still they have could just use pine tar. I know. Okay, sorry. Backtracking okay. way back to way. like before, way before I interrupted you about People the gum. People pleasing. Yes. I'm trying to say no more often. I'm trying to get better about it. For instance, this weekend when we have this haunted trail, it is the weekend of the chicken pie supper. The school club. Chicks pie. All the chicks pie supper that... Every year since my kids have been going to that school, we always volunteer. We always help serve and wash dishes until midnight and all this stuff. I love I love to do things for the school. It's not my favorite event because I don't love to do dishes. And that's always what I have to do at, at these events is wash dishes. But anyway. See, well, I don't know. This might be a cop-out. Maybe I said no. Because, not because I would have said no anyway, because I had a conflict of interest. But I was, like, really happy to be like, I can't do it. I can't wash dishes at the kitchen pies. Ch- kitchen pie. I can't wash dishes at the chick's pie supper this year. Yeah, here's what I think about but that. I felt wrongly proud of myself yes. for saying no. Yes, but you see, it's going to set a precedent, which will be healthy for next year, because you had to, you had the crutch, you had to, the support of having a sort of a conflict of interest, so-called, next year, you're going. You're going to build on this year, and you're just going to be able to say no. I don't no, know if I can just independently just say, say no. no. No chicks pie supper. <laughs> I don't I know if I can say up it. Till midnight. <laughs> yes, you're gonna up to my elbows and greasy pans. Yeah, that's like that job I had in Sweden. Oh, I had to. I was a pot washer for a while. Oh, this is the worst. It's really bad, it's especially for horrible. a vegetarian. Although I wasn't, I wasn't officially a vegetarian yet. Maybe that helped me decide to be a vegetarian. Just cook these huge, you know, it was a huge, huge restaurant. Yeah, the caked on greasy grime of meat things yeah, that, that have like scorched onto pans. Exactly. And you're in that back room by yourself. You know what's worse? What? Though? Every year at the Tunbridge Fair, when we do all the cooking over the open hearth in the colonial display, yes. we don't have any running water or anything like that. We have to do all those nasty, greasy dishes by hand with water that we heat over the fire in a little pan you know what i say about that like historically accurately and it's horrible it takes hours you know what i say about that as i look over at you i say woman's work is never done it's horrible it's it's so character building and you can never get it out we made indian pudding this year and it scorched into one of the big kettles and i scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed it for literally like two hours and it wouldn't come out 
you know, you say you were there scrubbing for two hours. You wouldn't even come and do the show for an hour. What are you talking about? Well, in the past, you've said, no, I can't, oh, I can't get oh. away from the colonial yeah, I kitchen. Know. Well, I, I couldn't. I had to be show. scrubbing the stupid pot so we could use See, it for the next I think your priorities thing. are a little screwed up. Well, You're so oppressed. You're oppressed by these female, you know, typically female activities like scrubbing mm-hmm. pots, you know? No, but see, I don't scrub pots a lot in my everyday life, so I feel like I need to do some sometimes. You mean you're punishing yourself? No, but John is the... John is the um, main pot washer i would well, say well isn't that funny pot washing is generally thought of where it's a male activity whereas dishwashing goes to the women now why is Weird. that i don't do pots and i don't do silverware i do all the plates and cups and bowls and things like that and then i leave a little pile of silverware and like a couple saucepans for john that's guess what how I we do. share guess what i do what everything <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i've always had issues with dishes i i would do any other chore household chore and i just it's because i have like weird text like i don't like i don't like getting dirt on my hands because i don't like that dry feeling on my fingers and there's something about like cold congealed food and so getting my hands in the soapy water i don't like you have it texture texturitis it's a you sense think, it's a touch think, sensitivity you think if it, you were vegetarian you'd have that issue the same y- issue yes i don't this i has, love washing doesn't dishes seem to, oh, I, I hate i love that's right you, I, you came and washed my dishes once because i was complaining about how i hate washing dishes you know so what much. it is i love these tasks where i can kind of zone out and i can enter this world of warmth and sensuality and no, the I just sa- can't zone no, out when I'm stop. washing dishes. Listen. What? what? Learn learn something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because this could change your Maybe life. Maybe you're just built that way though. Like I can't I don't really zone out when I'm washing them. I feel irritable because I don't like the feeling on my hands. What sign are you? I'm a Virgo. Virgo. Maybe it has something to do with that. Dough. Dough? <laughs> it has to do with like I don't like to touch the weird soap, and I don't like to touch the weird sponge. What is weird about soap? I just don't like the way it feels. Soap is so great. It smells good. It feels good. Yeah. John keeps buying this Myers basil, and it makes me almost choke. Oh, I, I don't, don't like the smell of I don't it get at the, all. I don't get the basil. I do get the Myers soap. Yeah. I get the other, other flavors or whatever they're you called. You know what's a good fine. one? Geranium. Yes, I love honey, geranium. I love the smell of geranium. Honeysuckle. I don't know if we have that well, one. Well, if you like the smell. I like the lemongrass. I like the geranium. I like all that. The basil one, like I can feel it like making my throat close. It's horrible. Okay. You're giving me mixed messages. I thought you didn't like soap. And now you're telling me how much you like this. No, 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 I'm saying I like the scent. The scent of some of those other but soaps. But not touching it. No, with, I don't want to touch with any With a of it. dish, with a water. I don't, like, don't like the, the feeling of it. I don't like the sponge. You don't like like smoothly going around and around and around? <laughs> no. <laughs> that is such a good feeling. How can you not like that? Because it's usually, okay, you are cleaning up after your own self, which is perfectly fine because maybe you're not a total pig. My kids have like squirted sriracha sauce and like grossness all over their plate. But making all that mess go away, it feels so satisfying. It's such a simple way to have satisfaction in your life. I feel no satisfaction for those kind of chores that are monotonous and have to be repeated several times a day. It gets We are so opposite on that. Upsetting to me. I'm like, I'm going to wash these dishes and you little... You know what? Are just gonna make them all dirty again? And yeah, but you see, what I felt. This is what I felt. Again, it's like Sisyphus and his rock. When my kids were young, it was a way for me to sort of ground and center myself to go over to the kitchen sink and just focus on the sound of the running water and getting things clean. And the, all hell could be breaking loose in the house, and I would just be happily over there washing the dishes. Oh. It was pacifying. It was like meditation. No, just okay. We'll just consider. I have other chores that are fine. I like to like sort socks and fold clothes. Oh, you do. Vacuum things like that are fine because I'm not touching. I'm. I don't know. I have a touch issue. You have a a texture issue. Okay, that's all right. I'm not like putting you down. I like to go in the water when I'm swimming and stuff, but I don't. Mm -hmm. Want to just stick my hands in? That's weird. Okay. Would you go down to a lake and just stick your hands in? Yes. Like that's... I do it all the time when well, I'm gardening. I don't, I don't know. Well, if you're going to go wash your hands, I suppose. Okay. Okay. We'll think about this during the next song, all which right. is... Is it time for it already? Yeah. What's to believe in? This is called... Who sings this? I don't remember. Okay. Let's good. see. Who is this? I'm going to find out. 
We're going to find out when we play it. All right. So let's press the button, magic button. And here we go. There's a man on your doorstep He says you must understand There's a highway to heaven I'm going right through your land And then you look to the mountain And then you look to the sky And then he hands you the money And you're left wondering why Over the mountain A wild storm's been raging And I'll follow no footsteps Through the white falling snow What's to believe in If we ever stop dreaming I've been dreaming of a time long ago I've been dreaming of a time long ago Whatever happened to the boulder bell farm once lived prosperity in its New England charm. And Oregon Mountain, you know it's looking like hell. A graveyard of memories that the skitters have found. the mountain Oh, wild storm's been raging And I'll follow no footsteps through the white falling snow What's to believe in If we ever stop dreaming I've been dreaming of a time long ago of a time long ago such a nice voice yeah that was uh lizzie mandel and the pristine production values of colin mccaffrey 
up in Plainfield, Vermont. Whoa. His stuff sounds just so clean and crisp and clear and like... Are you it's like heart- advertising for your competition? What are you yeah, doing? I guess I am because he's a heart wrencher. I've sent, I've sent people to him like who, you know, who don't want the kind of crazy, messy process that we have over at my organic boutique studio. Uh, things, maybe they are crazy or messy during the process, but they certainly do not come out crazy and messy. They come out quite polished and lovely. So who cares what the process is if you get the end result that you so desire? Well, yes. And I find that essentially I get the right clients working with me and that's great. You know, it just, it's magical. Back to astrology, for example, (laughs) which I believe in wholeheartedly. (laughs) Oh, you know what? Yeah. We have this thing where I don't, I don't really like to shop that much. I hate to grocery shop, but... Um, it's because you, you go to the wrong stores. I, I don't like any grocery places. No, you don't go to... You've went to Hunger Mountain Co-op. You would like No, I shopping. go to the Hunger Mountain Co-op. I hate that above all grocery stores. Oh, because, come on. Yeah, you want to know why? Because why? every time I go in there, you round a corner, and there's somebody that you know, and you have to talk to them. Oh, that's the social aspect. I don't want to be social when I'm shopping, because I'm always in a hurry. I just want to get my corn you know pops you, and get out of there. Okay, first of all... You're shopping at the wrong time of day. And if, they don't have corn pops anyway. If you If you go at like 10 o'clock in the morning, you're not going to bump into people. Ugh. It's a great time to go. Well, anyway. Okay. For some of those things that you can't get in stores, really. Yes. Easily around here. Yes. You know, you can go on Amazon on your computer and then it just is delivered to your house. And that's way better because you don't have to talk to anybody and it's just nice. So on Amazon, we have an account and... um. When you buy things on Amazon, it goes into your shopping cart, right? Right. Then you go and and click, you know, confirm and pay and all that stuff. Yeah. So we have this shopping cart on Amazon. And over the course of the week, if there's some small object or something that we find ourselves wanting or needing, John and I will go on Amazon and put it in the shopping cart. I mean, obviously not a large purchase that we would, like, discuss with each other, but little things that – yeah, and, it, and, it, and you missing in our life. You come back to it, and it's still in the shopping cart, right? Even if you didn't buy it, it exactly. just sits so there. You just leave it there. Sits there. So, so um, we needed a bunch of those metal shepherd's crooks that you of hang lanterns and stuff on. Did. So I went and I put them in the shopping cart, and I know that. You see, John's the one with the credit card, not me. So at the end of the week, he goes in and he picks, like, the things that we really actually do need and the things that like we don't need, and buys them okay. because occasionally. I think maybe the kids go on too and put something in the cart. Just sneak it in there. Just put it in there. Yeah. So you, you check what's in the cart before you just click pay, obviously. So um, I a long box came in the mail a few days ago and I said, oh, great. It's my shepherd's crooks. I've been waiting for these. And I went and got some scissors and I opened the cardboard box and instead of shepherd's crooks, it was like naked lady mannequins that John had ordered on <laughs> John had ordered on Amazon. He didn't order. He took my shopper trucks out of the cart and he randomly bought himself some naked lady mannequins. No. Yes. No. Yes. For what purpose? Well, they're for the haunted. Tell. They're for the haunted forest. But like, really? Yeah. But it was a little bit of a shocker to open up a box where you're expecting to find some cast iron shepherd's crooks. And instead, be greeted with enormous press, plastic, like Barbie doll breasts, like protruding yes. at you as you I, flip the I'm box getting open. a little more intrigued by this uh, haunted forest, and I'm surprised that children are. I am too. Coming. There's Is there a safe an adult word. section? No, there's a safe word though. If did you, you say decide, the safe word? Did you then decide can on the safe word? Remember, we yeah, were... it is just pumpkin. It's just pumpkin. What? I know. I'm sorry. You might just say pumpkin just by accident. No, why? Because a pumpkin is a is all around on Halloween. There's many, I know, many and there pumpkins. are pumpkins on the trail, but I, I think it'll be pretty obvious to our to our ghosts if you're saying pumpkin because you see one or pumpkin because you want them to stop ghosting you. So you have to sort of scream pumpkin with a, yes. a blood curdling scream, and then right. th- they'll know that they'll you're not retreat. just calling out a vegetable. Yes, is, is a, a pumpkin, pumpkin a vegetable? vegetable? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a. Fruit. Well, there's obviously some confusion there for us. I, th- I feel like it's not a vegetable. Well, it's a squash. Not a squashes fruit. are in their own like vine bearing in, in their own vine vegetable <laughs> category. category. Why yes, are they? that is are a they type le- of They're not a vegetable. legume. Legumes are on vines as well. They're not a pea. There's a lot of people out there that know the answer to that, and they're screaming at us, but we cannot hear them. 
and don't call Sorry. us either because we won't answer the phone. <laughs> you could you I, can get us on our Facebook page. You know, I am scared of masks. I just want to say that as a Halloween kind of uh, confessional. Because mm. I think what... I think it freaks me out because... I'm not wearing a mask. I'm just being myself. Yes, That's but most enough. people... Most people have masks on, yeah, even when they're yeah. not wearing masks. I hate to say it, oh, oh, I see but there's that saying. duality to people, and you can feel it. So you can feel, you can feel the mismatch, and it's normal, and that's so terrifying just to be alive because everywhere you go, people are wearing masks. It's amazing that we can even survive in this climate. <laughs> This climate of duplicity. I love that whenever you say something super deep, we just start to giggle. Like, why? It's just an automatic response. I know. I know. Because life is so, you know, weird and funny. And I think if you have, I decided that I was going to make a little card for my car that says like three things. So when I'm freaking out, I just look at my card and I go, oh, humor. (laughs) You in know? your car? Yeah. You, are you freak out in your car a lot? Well, I freak out anywhere. I'll have the card in my house too, in a conveniently located situation. Are you going to laminate it? Location? Yes, I could laminate it. I have laminating supplies. Right. You could laminate it. I have an it account at lamina- laminator.com. That's a thing? Yes. For real? Yes. Well, because I always make bookmarks. So you I send them to laminator.com? No, I what? get laminating contact paper. Oh. I just use I mean contact plastic. Oh. I had to eliminate a lot of stuff this no, week too. No, if you if you were going to make like 500 to 1000 bookmarks, you would yeah. not use uh, shipping tape. I was getting pretty pissed at the shipping tape because it was getting all wrinkled on my on my signs yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I've I've, I've I've used that when I was really like hard up. Yeah. If I if I was just going to make maybe one bookmark really fast, I, I might feel use shipping like tape. I could really use a laminator. I'm always trying to laminate something. Well, I use cold Pla- cold press plastic or whatever. I don't use a heated laminator. Oh, I, f- I just I use want a guy- heated. I want the heated ones that you roll them through and they smell toxic. Oh, there's a sound in my left ear. Do you hear that? Do you hear it? Kinda. Huh, I, I thought that sound my- was just somebody in the other room. No, I don't know what it is, but it's cool. It's like aliens landing. Maybe they are. Look at it. Wait. No, I think no. it's. I think it's in my device. Probably that's interesting. Okay, sorry to get distracted there. That's okay. But we've only got like two and a half minutes. Oh, we three, better or three and a half. Thank minutes. our sponsors, which are Howville Farms, the Tunbridge Grease Collective, and Mountain Folk. I hear it too. Yeah. Oh, if you hear it, then it's, it's not like from, water. It's like bubbling. It's like an electronic um, pulse. Is what oh, it no, is. that's not what I hear. It's the universe trying hear, like, to communicate. <laughs> no, there's some somebody's trying to communicate. That's what it's, I told you, the aliens. Yeah, it, that's why it's great to be on the radio because you have that direct line to the universe. Right. I mm. love that about it. It's we, stopped. We no, aren't going to. It's somebody in the next that's room. That's what I said. There's somebody in there. They're using some device. What if they're listening in on us? Well, I had the whole an ex-husband who used to do that. I had an ex-husband who used to record my conversations through the wall. Oh, I, me too. Outside. Really? Yeah. Let's, let's bond over there. Right that. on, sister. I love you. <laughs> All right. So we're going to sign off. And we won't see you guys next week or the week after. Yeah. Because Christina's away yeah, and I but, can't function without her. But we're, we're going to so come back. So there'll be something cool here in, have, our, in our space. Yeah, instead. we're going to have fun stuff to talk about. And so when we're back, we'll be all totally on our game. Yeah, so Again. thanks thanks for spending the hour with us. I know. Have a happy Halloween and come to our haunted uh, trail if yep. you want to this week. All right. And here's and a track uh, by Carl Goulet called Borrowed Time. Did you, you know one? who it is? Yes, I do. You're amazing. Because we recorded it at my studio. <laughs> so. Crikey. Any last words? No. Okay. Bye, guys. See you next week. Or three weeks from now. <laughs> <laughs> Seems we're living on borrowed time Feels like it's about to run out The clock is ringing out a hollow chime Living on borrowed time When the last grain of sand falls through Oh Lord, what am I to do? Window closing while I'm still in line Waiting on borrowed time Had it going, but it went so fast 
had it leveraged at prime Made a fortune but it didn't last Banking on borrowed time But when the last grain of sand falls through I gotta pay with interest due Owing a dollar only got a dime Paying on borrowed time I hope it's not too late to do something to change my fate But too much has gone by the dam to save the fool I am So much riding on borrowed time, put all my chips on the line I take the deal from my paradigm, betting on borrowed time. But when the last grain of sand falls through, I gotta play the hand I drew in the prison of my own design, doing borrowed time. In the prison of my own design, doing borrowed time. In the prison of my own design, Doing borrowed time Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme Living on borrowed time